Have you ever opened Live2D and been completely overwhelmed by the layout? Let's go over all the different tools in Live2D. Hey, hey, it's Ray, and today we're gonna go over the general layout of Live2D and where to find a bunch of useful tools. Well, it'll change for everyone, so don't get too hung up over where things are located on my screen, but what these pieces of the UI are called. Let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna start with a toolbar up at the top where we have the three different edit levels. Edit level one, two, and three. At level one is the most detailed and lets you manage every conversion dot or little subdivisions inside the deformer. Good for very specific cleanup, but if you use it for all of your rigging, it can make your life a lot harder. Use this for cleanup and not initial deformation. Level two is the default. It lets you make changes from the green Bezier control nodes. You can add more, but the default will be placed in the corners in the middle. Level three is the most general. No matter the level of inner subdivision of the deformer, this will always deform from the corners. It's good for the biggest movements and a great place to start for big motions, like head angles. It's generally good to go from the more general, bigger edit settings and work to more detailed. If you start with the more detailed, it'll take a lot more time and effort and often end up looking worse, since it'll be difficult to get each point to move nicely together. It'll end up being a lot more detailed than big picture, basically. So in working with your deformers, you can also edit the edit type which will adjust how when moving the green control points, those Bezier control points, it'll adjust how it affects nearby control points. It'll retain, retaining control structure will leave everything else in place, whereas the smooth options will smooth out nearby control points and create a nicer, cleaner deformer shape. I really like Smooth 3 personally when rigging until I'm doing fine detail work and cleanup towards the end. So it's a nice way to kind of make sure that my movements are nice and smooth. Next to our edit levels is the texture atlas button. The Texture Atlas button creates a texture atlas for your model. Basically, it's a texture that VTube Studio loads for your model art because it loads in a series of 3D planes and it tells it which textures go where. How your you want your model to look, you'll need a bigger texture and bigger base art. Next is the Mesh Editor tool. It allows you to edit the mesh of your selected art layer. The mesh is what allows Live2D to alter the shape of your art and create that illusion of depth and movement. You can mainly create mesh or edit an existing mesh with this tool. And for more details on how to use it, check out my Setting Up Your Art for Live2D video. Next up, we have the Auto Mesh Creator which will automatically create mesh for selected art at varying levels of detail based on your selected preset. If you have the paid version of Live2D, you can also create your own and save time in the future. Next to that, we have the Deformer Creation Tool. It creates a deformer on top of your selected model part, and you can name it and change what it's attached to and all of those things. You can also set how many divisions it has or how fine-grained or broad the effects on the art is. The more broad, the more likely you are to see edges or sharp points, while finer details can require more processing power and potentially more difficulty rigging. And the free version will have a limit of nine by nine division points, though I've never used more than that myself. You can change how many division points it has later on though. So generally I'd recommend starting with more broad and only increasing the amount later if there's something specific you need to edit. The next is the rotation deformer creation tool. This allows you to create a rotation deformer as the name states, and the rotation deformers are great for doing specific rotations and angles. But if you have any deformers on top of the rotation, it won't allow for specific mesh transformations. So be sure to use them wisely in your deformer layout. The biggest tip I can have is that you can also manually enter an angle into the tool details tab if you have specific angles you want to move something to. So for example, if you want something to spin 360 degrees, you can key zero and key 360 and it'll go the full way around. Next that is the continuous rotation creation tool. This allows you to create multiple rotation deformers at once. And this is really handy if you want to set up something like physics, but usually I just use a standard tool. Next to that is the arrow selector tool. It's gonna be basically your standard arrow selection tool. It's your default tool selected when you first open Live2D. It lets you select things and you can drag to create a selection box area. Next is the lasso selector tool. It lets you draw a selection where what you want to grab and will select message and deformers and will prioritize your currently selected object. So if you're working with a deformer, you can use it to select specific points within that deformer to just deform those. It's really handy for that. Otherwise, it's pretty much just like any other standard lasso tool. Next is the brush selector tool. It'll let you brush along points you want to select. So similarly to the lasso tool, you can brush across the specific points you want to grab. You can also hold B and drag to change the size of the brush. Next, we have the deform path creation tool. It'll allow you to create deform paths, which is basically where you put points along your art mesh that you can use to create a path to deform them with. This can only be applied directly onto mesh. The deform paths lets you treat mesh like a line and you can select points along the line to change them in the shape of the mesh. It's really good for eyelids and mouth lines in my experience. I also sometimes use them for eyebrows. Next, we have the Deform Brush tool, which is kind of like a fancy liquify tool in Live2D, where it'll let you push and pull points of the deformer with a brush. It can be really nice if you're just trying to gently nudge something in a movement. 
You can also change the brush size by pressing and holding B and dragging, just like with the Delection Brush tool. Next, we have the Glue Edit tool, which allows you to manage the weights of your glue. You can add or subtract the weights of glue to make it stickier or looser connection between those points. Essentially, it's to determine how much influence those points will have on the movement of other points. I'll be honest, I'm still learning glue, but I plan to do a more in-depth tutorial in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Next is the Art Path tool, which lets you create a new line or path inside of your model. I've never really used this, but you could use this to potentially add outlines or shadows in places, but I usually just copy and paste other art meshes for that. Not sure what uses it is, given I've not had much experience with, but feel free to let me know in the comments if you've ever used it. Now we're gonna go ahead and move down to the Parameter tab, which is where all of our funky little parameters live. Essentially, this is how you're going to control and manage the movement of your model. It's the most useful and most used panel in the UI. So first, let's go through some definitions. What's a parameter? A parameter in Live 2D is a value with which you can create keyforms, which are basically like poses that'll create motion. These values will be the ones you use to make your model move. Some parameters are added to Live 2D by default. You can change these if you'd like, but some of the default have built-in behavior, like the angles and stuff, to basically be set up to already work in VTube Studio if you use the auto setup. I'll define the most important ones. So angle X is the horizontal movement of your head, looking left to right. Angle Y is the vertical movement of your head, looking up and down. Angle Z is the rotation of your head, to tilting it side to side. IL open is how open your left eye is. It'll be the character's left eye, which will be the, on your right side. IR open is how open the character's right eye is, which will be on your left side. IL smile will be the character's left eye shape when smiling. Same thing for the IR smile will be the same for the right eye. Eyeball X is the pupil's position looking left to right, so horizontally. Eyeball Y is the pupil position looking up and down, so vertically. Mouth form is basically the shape of the upper lip. So when the mouth is closed, this will be going from frowning to smiling. But when the mouth is open, it'll basically be like the O shape versus like an A shape. Mouth open is how much your mouth is open. Body X is going to be your body looking left to right. Body Y will be your body going up and down. Body Z will be your tilts, usually from the hips if it's a full body model. Breath is a parameter that automatically goes from zero to one and can be used for, you know, imitating breathing in a model. It can also be used for physics to create idle animations without having to set up an actual animation file, which is really handy. So what's a keyform? A keyform is going to be a point at a specific value along your parameter, which will basically save the pose or the current shape of your art mesh and deformer. And it will tween or interpolate and fill in the gaps between each shape that you've defined smoothly. So you can go from point A to point B and Live2D will basically handle the path between those two. There's a sub menu with lots of handy shortcuts on the side of the parameters tab. Reset to default will set everything back to neutral or the default value of each parameter. Usually this will be like in the middle for angles or eyes open. You can change the default value of any parameter uh, by selecting edit parameter and seeing what the maximum, minimum, and default values are. Lock default form will prevent you from editing the default values on your model. So if you don't want to accidentally making, be making changes to the neutral position instead of like a destination point, you can enable this or disable it again if you need to make changes to the default again. Parameter settings will open up a big window of information about all your parameters that'll let you see their maximum, minimum, and default all at once. Which is basically like opening the edit parameters of every, every one of your parameters all at the same time. Group setting will let you manage the setting for your parameter groups or your parameter folders. It lets you change their names and their IDs. Motion sync settings for handling lip syncing audio for animation. So I've never personally used this for making models. So I'm not very familiar with how it works. Settings for eye blink and lip sync will open up a window with all your parameters and let you select which ones we'll use for blinking and lip syncing in the physics and animation tools. The blinking one is useful for models as this won't be enabled by default. So be sure to go in here and check the IL open and the IR open for blinking to make sure that they blink. Auto generation of face motion is a newer feature with Live 2D 5.0 and will automatically create head angle keyforms for you. That is a starting point if you're just familiar and using the program. It'll have you select the deformers for the prominent face pieces and handle moving them for you. As I said, this is still a pretty new feature, so I'm still familiarizing myself with it, so apologies if I miss any fine details. Synthesize corners will handle a generating overlap between two parameters. So like if you're doing angle X and angle Y, if you have moved angle X to the left and angle Y up, you'll need to handle both of those motions at the same time. 
but it doesn't always work right. It works great for simple interactions, but maybe ends up really wonky for something complex like head angles, so keep that in mind. It can be a great time saver or place to start, but it may not always make them perfectly for you. It basically just kind of adds your two motions together in the simplest way possible. Reflect motion will take whatever shape you have with your current keyform and reflect the shape of the deformer or mesh to the opposite end, like looking left and reflecting right or looking up to down, looking left to reflecting right with a horizontal reflection and looking up to down for a very vertical reflection. Multiple keys editing will let you change multiple keyforms for selected parameter objects for things like opacity, draw order, and multiply your screen color. Handy if you need to make a bunch of changes to those at once. This can be really useful for things like an emote that shows or hides a bunch of pieces of the model. Bulk Reflect lets you swap a bunch of rigged keys of selected parameters, basically making a positive 30, negative 30, and vice versa. I have admittedly never used this. Extended Interpolation lets you tell Live2D to generate points between your two keyforms to smooth out a motion if you need something to sway like a pendulum. This can be really good at creating that arc instead of going from point A to point B in a straight line, which is the default, by selecting other interpolation types besides linear. Limit settings for blend shape weights deals with blend shapes exclusively and will be covered in a future video. Next we have the inspector tab, which will look different depending on what part of your model you currently have selected. I'll call out a few important points on each of the different types. For a warp deformer, it has the conversion division setting, which will control how many underlying points are within the deformer, all those little individual parts in between. The max of the free version is 9x9, but anything bigger can also cause performance issues, so it's not generally recommended but you'll have smoother deformations at higher numbers at the cost of more processing power. Then lastly, we have the measure edit type, which I mentioned before, which has things like retain control structure, smooth one, smooth two, and smooth three. And these will affect how much the other measure control nearby will be affected by the movements you're currently making. The higher the smooth, the more it'll smooth out the motion to create a nice clean deformer shape. But if you would like to be very specific in your motions, you should do retain control structure. I recommend starting with smooth and going to retain as you're getting more specific and doing little cleanups. Next, we have what's here for an art mesh, which we have clipping ID, which will identify which layers this art mesh should be clipped to. Invert mask, which will make those clipped layers cut into this layer instead of them being defined by that shape. Draw order, which by default is 500 determines the layering of your model, so the higher the number, the more forward that piece will be, and the lower the number, the further back it will be. It can be used to create layering effects and can be keyed. So if you'd like something to move forward or move back over the course of a parameter, this is the, the field that you can edit. And lastly, there's blend mode, which will determine the way that this layer affects the layers underneath it. Live2D only supports normal or default blend mode, multiply, and additive. So keep this in mind when drawing your art. And lastly, we have a rotation deformer, which as expected, has the angle that you can manually set if you'd like to do a specific motion, such as turning 360 degrees as mentioned before. This would be where you would key that. And for any type, we have opacity, the transparency of your, of your currently selected object, 100 being visible and completely opaque, and zero being invisible. I use this a lot for toggles, for when I want to hide or show things. Name will be the name of your selected object. The ID will be your identifier or the specific unique name for your selected object, which is what we use for clipping. So if you need to clip something, you need to get the ID of the destination, destination art mesh or layer. Part it will be the folder that this object lives in, in the part menu, which we'll go over in a moment, which basically has all your art layers. It's going to look like your art file. Deformer is going to be the deformer that this current art mesh or other deformer is attached to, inside of, or a child of, if any of those terms help you understand. Basically, this is the, th the shell around your currently selected piece. Multiply color is going to let you apply a multiplication to this object. This can also be keyed if you'd like to do a color changing effect, and it will make the layer darker with whatever color you have selected. Screen color is the same, but it'll make your, your layer lighter with whichever color you have selected. Next, we're going to go into the Tool Details tab. This tab is very specific for your selected tool. So depending on what tool you're using, you'll find the details here. Things like mesh edit tools and temporary deformation tools will show up here. It's generally empty unless you're using a very specific tool. Next, we have the Deformer tab. Locate all the deformers and different parts of your model. This is where you'll manage what people refer to as the deformer hierarchy. 
basically the layout of all your deformers. When you first open up Live 2D, these will all be collapsed to only your highest level deformers. And click on any piece of the model in the view window to open up where it is located in the list. The arrow can be used to collapse or expand a selected deformer, or if you use the one at the top, everything all at once. An eye can be used to hide or show that piece and anything contained within it. The lock prevents changes to that piece or anything contained within it. And the arrows, two arrows, let you expand a selected object to see what's inside of it. The lock tag is application logs. It's generally not useful for a rigor on an average basis. In fact, I've never really looked at this. Then we have the part tab, which will basically be all of the pieces of your model. It should start out identical to your art file, with everything separated into the folders you initially set up in your art program. As you add deformers, they'll get added into respective folders or parts in this menu. So if you can't see a deformer, it may have gotten into a folder you currently have hidden, so you can move it elsewhere as needed. If you add or update your Photoshop document during the rigging process, it'll put new layers at the top of the parts folder, which will be considered in front if the draw orders are the same. You can also note that next to all of the parts, we have all of the draw orders for those specific meshes. So this can be useful if you're trying to see what a current draw order is for a specific part of your mesh. You can also reorder parts as you want if you need to adjust the layering of your model. If you say, for example, want to put something behind another piece that was originally in front in your art program, you can just move it down in your art mesh instead of having to manually change the draw orders of everything else to make the layering go the way that you want. The colored icons at the top let you hide the objects in the list of that type. So if you only want to see art mesh, you could hide the others or vice versa. Lastly, we'll go over important drop-down items from the top menus of Live 2D. If you're looking for the physics menu, you can find it under the modeling tab all the way down at the bottom under physics settings, which will open up the physics window. I'll have a more in-depth breakdown of how the physics in Live 2D work, but if you just need to find it to play around with it, this is where it lives. When you're ready to export your model for a test or even final export, you'll want to go to File, Export for Runtime, and Export MCO3 File, which is type of files VTube Studio or other popular 2D VTubing programs use. Overall, the layout is completely adjustable for anyone using Live2D, so feel free to use these windows wherever you find that they're the most useful. This is the layout that I personally use, but find whatever works best for you. If you'd like to learn more about any of these tools, I'm going to go ahead and link some handy documents from the Live2D website, such as editor shortcuts, a general manual, and the toolbar manual. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, but overall, I'm Ray, and we're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you again next time! Thanks for watching!